And that's actually not the entirety of the problem. If both eigenvalues are minus 2 million, I wouldn't have a problem. Why? Because it, it scales. Because it scales, it's because actually the time scale of the entire system is like one millionth, mm -hmm. right? So, so to get the behavior of the system, I mean, if both eigenvalues are minus two million, the system would decay to zero or whatever equilibrium it's supposed to get to within a few millionth of a second. So. Even though I have to use a time step less than a million, I would be fine because I don't have to integrate that many time steps. This is the real problem because it has an eigenvalue of minus one. That means even though there is a mode that decays really fast, but there is another mode just that takes its time to evolve to whatever it needs to evolve, right? And in order to capture that behavior, you actually have to integrate for multiple seconds, most likely. And you have to use a time step less than a millionth. So that's the real problem about the second system. Is that, okay, what, I mean, if you, if you write it down, what does that say? It's basically d dt of x1 is equal to a million times what x2 minus x1 minus x1 right okay uh, d dt of x2 is equal to a million x1 minus x2 minus x2 right okay uh, it's just the, the the difference between x1 and x2 gets vanished uh, very quickly but the evolution of the whole is going to take its time. All right. Um, so now look at that system I brought in today. I may not uh, actually uh, may or may not actually run it. So so the system is uh, uh, is basically I get two thermal couples over here. Uh, let's actually run it to kind of uh, get the, get roughly the behavior. Um, I'll just turn it on to low. So I get two thermal couples. One is on the copper plate, one is on the aluminum plate. And uh, uh, these are glued together using thermal glue. So the conductivity between them is pretty good. And they are heated up using air, whose conductivity is really bad. So do we see, uh, a, like, do you see something that reminds you of uh, what we are dealing with over here the uh, heat transfer between the two plates is going to be pretty, like a pretty fast order or a pretty fast uh, mode but the heat transfer between the air and the plates is going to be a slow mode that's right that's right so we are practically having exactly the same system here right um, Basically, we have a. This is the slow mode in this system, but here the slow mode in the system is how both plates are heated up by the air. We have a faster system over here. There is also a faster system over there, and the faster system over there is the heat transfer between these two plates. I mean, both aluminum and copper are very good conductors, so the constant. That lies over here may not be a million, but like it's gonna be much much larger than the time constant, that is uh, uh, the the heating by the air, which we saw uh, several weeks ago that it took uh, like tens of minutes for this thing to heat up to um, to appreciable temperature, right? Okay, so so that's that's really uh, an example of what we call a stiff system. So a stiff system is a system has orders of magnitude difference in time scales. And uh, uh, what do we really mean by time scale in the mathematical sense is that when you linearize the system into a matrix and do eigenvalue analysis to the matrix, you get eigenvalues of very different orders of magnitude. You get some eigenvalue that are 
for example, here order one, another eigenvalue here order a midi. And uh, if you think of numerical methods, what that means is that you have to use a time step that makes the stability region, which scales with one over delta t, to be large enough to encompass all the eigenvalues, which means you have to encompass the largest eigenvalue. That means your delta t has to be inversely proportional to the largest eigenvalue. And then you have a very small eigenvalue that determines how long you have to integrate to get the most interesting behavior of the system. All right. That's why studying climate change is so hard. I mean, climate change happens over centuries, right? I mean, there are some system that kind of uh, gets heated up, like the ocean gets heated up very, very slowly. But in order for you to actually capture the physics, you have to you have all these uh, uh, things happening in the atmosphere, which happens very quickly in terms of uh, hours or minutes. So, so you have to really uh, use small time steps and integrate for centuries. So that's a, that's a, a, an example of a stiff system. And uh, the heat transfer is another example of stiff system. If you have a, uh, a heat transfer between two things that are very fast and then other heat transfer that is very slow, uh, that's also a stiff system. So why is systems with different time scales called a stiff system. I mean, wh where does the stiff come from? Any, any guesses? Why, why is it called stiff? What does that have to do with something being stiff? Frequency of like... Yeah, you, you raise your hand the first. The flexibility of your delta t. The flexibility of your delta t. Your choice is very definite. Okay, that's a that's a good way. I haven't thought about that. That's a good way to kind of uh, remember how stiff. I mean, the if a stiff system is not very flexible in choosing your delta t, maybe that that's right. A any anything else from a more physical perspective? It takes really long time in order to see the actual behavior change. So it would take like a really long Okay, I, I heard something about frequency. Yeah, uh, the like when I think of stiffness, I like think like the frequency of like a stiffer spring or like a stiffer beam will have a higher frequency. Right. So okay. So that's that's actually that's actually uh, the original place where the stiffness came in is in actually structural dynamics. Okay. So imagine you have to integrate. Uh, uh, imagine you're building a robot. <laughs> All right. So so yeah, you are having two different materials. One is a really softer, springy material. I mean, it's, you probably doesn't make a very good robot uh, using that. But imagine you have to simulate the dynamics of the robot using either a very springy material or a very stiff material. Okay. And uh, when you drop the robot to the ground, you want to figure out uh, where are the forces. So the springy robot can be simulated using a pretty big delta t, right? Because, uh, uh, because there is no time scale in the vibration of any part of the robot that has a very big lambda, right? All the lambdas are basically going to be uh, inverse proportional to so all the frequency, which actually is usually the imaginary part of the lambda here, is inversely proportional to the square root of uh, uh, stiffness, right? The, the k. So so if you have really small k, you don't have big lambdas. But if you have a really stiff uh, arm made of carbon fiber, for example you will have big case and uh, you will have really high frequency oscillations that requires you to use very small time steps. So that's another example of stiffness. So yet another example of stiffness is uh, actually where, oh, okay, so first of all, people did figure out ways to solve the stiffness problem. You don't actually have to 
use a time step size of a millionth to solve this problem. So for example, if you go to MATLAB, the correct way to solve this system is not using ODE45. Okay? There are other ODE solvers like ODE13 that will solve this system much, much, much more efficiently than if you use ODE45. What is the reason? Because ODE13 is actually designed to solve stiff systems. I think there is also ODE15 or something like that. So there are multiple ODE solvers you can use in MATLAB. So, and uh, actually the original research that went into the method of solving these stiff systems happened in chemical uh, simulations. Because in chemical simulations, actually, this, uh, there are some of the stiffest ODEs you can probably ever see in, in the world. It's because in, in simulating chemical reactions, you usually have one variable for each species in like uh, your, 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 uh, your chemistry, right? Some of the species take time to react, but some of the species, whenever a created, takes, it reacts like very, very, very fast. And the ratio in the time constants between different reactions can actually be one over a million. So, so this is now another example of very, very stiff system. It's like, for example, this, this term can happen because of one reaction. This term may be due to another different reaction. And the rates of the different reactions can be extremely different. So that's another example of very stiff system.